thing. Okay, that's how it comes off in one unit. That was a lot easier than what we did the other day. Very. Now me. So we're leaving the oil cooler in place. We're gonna remove these uh, cam phasers. I've labeled both of them uh, and also the sensors here. So we shouldn't be able to get those mixed up. All right, so we've got this brought around. You got your hole lined up with your mark. Number one's up. Valves are closed on number one. So we're number one. Uh, we're on the compression stroke. It would be smart to leave them all in the cover so don't get mixed up. We'll go ahead and pull our crankshaft pulley off. It's a hex shape for, to drive the oil pump. We'll set that aside and then we'll set these bottom screws that came out of the oil pan aside and we'll start sipping some of these. We'll kind of work our way around like a tire. That's gonna be a coolant drain right there. Figured that out on the last one. Again, that's just for water. So all these should be out and ready. Now it's just a matter of uh, not letting them hit the floor when we pull the cover off. So I'm going to attempt to gently pry this forward. She's coming loose now. I want to keep all these nuts and bolts in their location. Okay, I only lost one. So that's not terrible. Put it back in, it goes up here. So we're gonna keep all these together for now in the cover. We're gonna put a new closed timing set on it, chain and tensioners, so it doesn't look terrible. Let's compress this and put our pin in to lock it down, and that way we can get the chain off. We'll get these, uh, the tensioner, and the guide, we'll get these guides off, and then we'll be able to take the chain off and we can start removing the gasket and then the cylinder head. Okay, so I squished this back, slid a nail in there. We'll take this tensioner off and hopefully it doesn't explode. We have a new one of these, but I guess you never know. So I was gonna save this one just for now. So we'll set that aside. All right, now our chain's loose. Now we're gonna need a couple different sockets to remove these. Our chain's almost ready to go. So I'll get the socket ready. These are gonna be uh, T40. We'll take that out. We're gonna take this off. It's worn, but it's not terrible. Somebody must have replaced it. So we'll take that off. We've got new ones. We'll take this side. This side's smaller. This is not a T40. So now we'll take this off. The cam slid around. Hopefully it didn't bounce a valve off a piston. We have our timing tool that's coming for this. Okay, so we'll save this. We're gonna end up junking the chain and stuff, but we'll save it for now. It's like a bicycle chain. It's tiny. I'm just gonna hang it on this little toolbox here. We'll save our gear. So so we can probably start to peel this old gasket off. Yeah, the whole motor's moving. Let's see if we can peel all this off. We, again, we have a new one. Okay, there's the old gasket. That's off. We're gonna have to spend some time cleaning all this stuff up. So let's switch gears and move to the uh, head bolt and any hoses that we have to remove as well. Like most head bolts today, these are torque to yield bolts bolts so uh take them out throw them away uh, we're gonna go in reverse order so we'll start with number 12 and i'm just gonna crack them all loose you know just just barely move them and then we'll go back through them again and we'll barely move those until we get get everything loose even though we're throwing the bolts away we don't want to take any chances of you know just taking two all the way out or something and maybe having the head get weird so for the couple extra minutes we'll just take a second and we'll do it in reverse order we're gonna go ahead and set the cylinder head on i have the engine turned a little bit to make sure that this dowel that stops the crank shaft alex got this all cleaned up we got our new head gasket on so we're gonna set this bad boy down hopefully in the right spot i'm way off so far off you don't say that all right i'm having some trouble here what in the world is going on? oh well i think we better take a minute oh yeah there was some oil so it's a good thing we saw that that would have been not good we gotta wipe all that off the gasket that would have been not so good i forgot the way it was set and that it was probably gonna have leaked a bunch of oil out even though we rinsed it multiple times i'll pull this gasket off and we'll, we'll wipe the block off again to make sure we don't have any contamination on the surface here yeah some got under the gasket a little bit so we'll clean all this off we don't want any engine oil between the surfaces i guess i, I missed that step i'll have to wipe the head off we sprayed the camshafts down while it was sitting just so they wouldn't nothing would rust so our gasket's in pretty good shape now wipe it off a little bit more all right so we've got this down alex has got us a little tiny bit of oil on the head with these we're going to drop all these head bolts in they're all the same these are new head bolts too not recommended to reuse them i'm sure people have and it might work just fine but we don't want to do that for the cost of the bolts, just replace them. We're just gonna use this impact, the small impact, and all I'm doing is touching these bolts to the head. I'm not torquing at all, we're just touching it. So they've all touched, we'll get the torque wrench set up and we'll start our torque sequence. All right, so we did 15 foot-pounds, backed off one whole turn, then 26 foot-pounds. Now we're supposed to do 90 degrees on each one through the sequence, and then another 90 degrees, and that's it. So we've got the cams locked down. We've got a uh, an Amazon special timing set say omt 
to time this engine and so this plate whatever powder coater was on the outside of it was enough so that it wouldn't fit in the cams at all so i just scrubbed that off a little bit with some uh, sandpaper so it would slide in so we've got the cams locked there everything's all cleaned up here timing cover gasket is on we're going to set the timing cover now we've rtv'd the bottom of the timing cover in a little little tiny bit right there where it comes together with the oil pan we put a new front seal in it so we're going to get her lined up here and bolt it together these should all go okay that looks like it all right uh now we got to get started with some bolts alex is going to give us some bolts and we're going to put them in if you orient that the same way oh geez this was a huge mistake Why? it's a good what? thing i didn't tighten it up we don't have the timing chain or anything on it this would have never ran yeah that would have been bad don't pay any attention to me it's sunday if you're watching this, you'd have been like, oh, you're missing a pretty important step. Is that this chain right here? No, it's it's a new chain up there in the package. So we got our bottom gear. It's going to go on. doesn't have any timing marks or anything on it. It's a bottom gear chain. Chain doesn't have. This is a closed timing chain set. All right, so we're going to hang this on. Oh, we better change that top guide first. But actually, hang on, there's something that goes. No, we need to just take this off okay while you're doing this something you have to do is replace the pin that comes with the tensioner with this pin in your timing set so since there's not a bunch of oil pressure behind it it's not hard to do but the timing cover needs to fit over this we've got the chain started on this block up top we put this on and have adjusted it so it locks into the gears i'll go with the chain with you so from what i understand i think i goofed up let's take the chain back off so we'll just rest the chain on the cam there now we're going to slide this on we're going to get that in there and and now come around counterclockwise from this side whoop wrong side of that and we try and fit this chain something's not right there we go now we've got enough slack we'll start the tensioner uh we need alex to get us an e10 and a ratchet okay we'll tighten those up some yeah so these are 15 foot pounds we're just gonna snug them up for now so we got that those are tight now we need the bolt on the old tent all right so with everything set like that what we're gonna do is slide this oops I'm, I'm a knucklehead. Don't pay any attention to me. Okay, so we got to get this to come up and around, but we want the chain. There we go. So that's where that goes. We'll start this one in there. That's a star bit we're going to have to use. So there's that. Okay, now for the other new one. Oh, it came with new bolts. That's cool. So this guide is going to snap in there and then it's going to push over these holes and we'll start that. And then we will tighten these up. So you got this bottom one here and then you got these two you got to tighten. We've got the variable valve timing plate on here. We verified that the variable valve timing is correct. Uh, we've got our guides tightened down. Remember that this fits under here and make sure that your chain is within the guide. They have edges on them. You want to make sure it's right in the middle. So we've got all that done. Now we're going to fit the timing cover, which is where we started a minute ago and realized quickly that things were going off the rails. I don't want to lose all these bolts. All right, there's our cover. Now we're going to start all these. So that's why you have to replace that pin that comes with with the this is the pin that comes with the tensioner it would have never fit through that hole so you have to replace it with this pin. we'll start i wonder if we should use the impact just to run these in to tuck before we go through and torque them all probably be much more easy. so we'll get the impact and then we'll start running some of these in just to touch we got some that come in from the bottom of the oil panel so we have to run in so that part is all done. We can double check our variable valve timing here. So I think we'll go ahead and run these in so it doesn't change at all. This will just hold this in place. So that's done. Now I think we should tighten the cover. We're probably gonna put the water pump on. There's some, a couple water pump bolts that go all the way through. So we'll probably wanna put the water pump and gasket on and then tighten everything up on the timing cover. Now since some of these uh, water pump bolts go through the cover and into the engine, we're gonna try and get all these stuff. Started. we've got our gasket a little bit of sealant i don't know why the, the replacement water pump comes with a paper gasket instead of a metal gasket i guess paper's been used for 100 years we're just going to try and start all these a little bit i'll find the socket we need to make this work it's probably the small one right here so we'll just go through spin all these in and grab the impact okay now i think we're set to tighten the cover up all right we've got the timing cover and water pump tightened up what i was able to find is there's no specific sequence and i couldn't 
couldn't really find a torque spec either. They're small M6s, so be careful you don't strip them out or break them off. We've removed this. Now we're going to install the piece that Alex has, hopefully. Doesn't look good, does it? Like it's going to fit? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we It'll go. fit. Okay. <clears throat> we put this back in the kit. I'll get set up to tighten those down. These are like all the rest. These are going to be an E10. So we'll tighten these up. Get these tightened down. That's for the top guide. We still have our variable cam timing locked in place. All right. So that should do it now. If we've done our job correctly, this timing mark should, what little bit of timing mark there is, should line up again. There we go. Yep, it lines up. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to roll the motor over with no spark plugs before we go much further. Make sure everything's locked down. We got to pull the grenade pin on our timing, pull the back plate, and then we'll probably crank it over by hand a few times and just make sure we don't have any piston to valve interference, anything like that, before we move forward. All right, guys. So that was it for the 1.4 liter Chevy Cruise turbo uh, we got it all reassembled i didn't capture the first start but yeah it ran good the timing worked out good my cousin actually has the car and he's been driving it for a little bit now and everything's going well so that was the procedure for replacing the timing chain as well as a head gasket <laughs>